YouTube world it's Eden back with another video and this time I'm going to be talking about everything you need to know to do it yourself okay so there are three things that you need to know mainly let me just grab my notes here so I don't ramble um, the first thing is you want to start with one or two products and perfect them the second is um, the best use of free formulas. And I'll be talking about where to find free formulas and the best way to use those free formulas. And the third thing is considering buying paid formulas. So in the form of books, in the form of membership sites, in the form of um, courses and programs, coaching, templates, all those things. And I'll give you different resources for finding those as well. So in this first video, I'm mainly going to talk about finding your first two products and then perfecting those products, okay? So I think that when you're starting with off, you really want to do something very simple, um, relatively inexpensive, and that you can replicate. And it has to be something that is a staple in people's um, regimen. And ordinarily people think shampoo and conditioner. Okay, because that's two things that matches. And that's totally a viable start. You can totally start with the shampoo and the conditioner. Um, but it is going to be, of all the things you could start with, the, the more complicated thing to start with, simply because what is required to create a shampoo is completely different from what is required to create a conditioner. So it's two skill sets that you need to master. Uh, I don't think it's insurmountable or it's too much, but... Uh, I think that the easier you make it, the more likely you are to get out the door, okay? So I would start with an oil, um, a whipped butter, right? Um, a simple flaxseed base gel, and um, I can give you tricks later for how to make that flaxseed gel unique or to thicken it or to add botanical ext extracts to make it different from your just regular homemade flaxseed gel um, or the other gels that are on the market. So, um, and I'll give you a few variations of combos you can use. But one thing I like about an oil is that every person who has curly hair or who has coily hair needs an oil in their regimen. Okay, so whether they use it for pre-poo, whether they use it for pre-rinse, I mean an oil rinse, whether they use it um, to just seal their ends in the middle of between washes, whether they use the lock method liquid oil cream, and so they're using it as a moisturizer in their styling products, uh, oils are essential. And so just having a treatment oil is something that they can use with any product line that they're using. It's a universal product in that way. Uh, they're easy to make. It's very pristine, so for those of you who are concerned about creating something that's preservative free, you don't need a preservative for your oils, okay? So that becomes a very um, easy thing to create. You can make it fancier by adding essential oils. Um, you can make it fancier by adding herbs, and your essential oils and herbs can have specific purposes, okay? So, you know, you, I have a free botanical extracts workshop and I tell you how to create an herbal um, infusion of oil so you can add a little bit of your oil say 20% 25% of your herbal infusion and then mix other carrier oils and then add just you know 2% or so of essential oils and you're good to go you have a great treatment oil um, so in terms of oils you can do a treatment oil which is really more something that's designed to be washed off or a finishing oil, which is something kind of designed to be left in. And the difference is that the treatment oil, because it's mainly going on the scalp um, as well as the hair, is designed to um, sort of be more medicinal, kind of help with hair growth, any scalp issues that are there. Um, it's, it, it helps uh, sort of create a barrier when you're doing the washing process so the hair isn't completely stripped dry. Um, it, it serves a multiplicity of, flunk, of functions. So um, it's, it's a, one that you can make more medicinal and it's one because it's designed to be rinsed off that you can create heavier, okay? And then a finishing oil is usually a lighter oil that's left in the hair 
um, and so you don't want it to be too greasy or too sticky a lot of times it will probably won't even touch the scalp even though you can make one that's designed maybe with a dropper to go on the scalp in between braids or twists or whatever yes and hey friends I am wearing a completely different outfit that's because I had to go get my um, son from the bus from school so <laughs> here I am again um, so we were talking about oils so you can do a treatment oil and a finishing oil and that can be a combo duo you could start with or just do one or the other another combo you could do is a conditioner and a treatment oil or a conditioner and a finishing oil um, you could do a shampoo and an oil um, I think most people with curly coily hair think conditioner is more important than shampoo I know people always think shampoo first but really a conditioner is way more important than shampoo because um, you'll find people who use conditioner only but you won't find people who use shampoo only unless they have dreads that that's and that's a whole other category of products so other combinations you could do you could do an oil and a gel or a conditioner and a gel or a whipped butter and a gel just kind of go only styling products it doesn't have to be only um, sort of general grooming products like shampoos and conditioners okay but the key is you need to start easy you need to give yourself a break you need to do something that you feel like even a baby could do so that you get out the door so you move forward I just really want to see you moving forward just make one product and put it out there my first product was a whipped butter and it was really mostly geared towards the body but obviously because I was in an environment where there weren't many um, people like of color you know so <laughs> those people weren't going to be putting shea butter in their hair even though they could do it as a pre shampoo treatment especially because we lived in the desert but you know the first product that I sold on a wide scale was a whipped shea butter Okay, and um, over the past um, six years, I've made at least ten or twelve thousand dollars from one retailer from that product. Okay, so don't underestimate the power of just one simple product. And before I go, there's another thing I wanted to say: the idea of singular oils. Okay, with singular oils, you can just package one product right um, you could buy oils in in bulk and I tell you where to buy oils in bulk um, even expensive oils like argan oil marula oil baobab oil you can buy those and sell them in two ounce bottles four ounce bottles eight ounce bottles and that could just be your product is that you sell singular oils you say you sell shea oil you sell Jamaican black castor oil you sell apricot kernel oil you sell mongongo babasu why couldn't you be selling it as well to curly people um, there's certainly lines that are doing that that'll sell a two ounce bottle of argan oil for eighteen dollars in target you know you could do the same thing and you know maybe make it more reasonably priced so people can afford to buy it so that's an idea too and that's a very simple start out the door and it gets you in people's uh, on people's radar and it's a great way to to have a marketing campaign that's based only on talking about maintenance you know because oil is really a maintenance product um, and it can be included in different ways of the regimen and once you do singular oils it's also much like water one of the only products that you can market as being for multiple hair types so those are ideas for your first product and I'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks.